باب قضاء الفوائد uh, The قضاء of mischief bears So what should a person be doing when they are missing? We talk about what must a person do when they have missed their prayers whether they miss their prayers intentionally uh, by not praying them or it was unintentional they either forgot or they were left sleeping and so they missed their prayers now to rem the thing to remember over here is that when someone misses their prayers uh, it is actually necessary in order to pray the next prayer that you've completed the previous salah like this is a condition that must be met if you are to pray maghrib for example you must have prayed asr zohar and fajr if you missed asr before that uh your maghrib won't be valid until you first pray asr so if someone's missed a prayer before making the Salah of the time in question, they should make sure that their qaza has been performed and they have no qaza salawat in their limb. Right? And so the Prophet he said, that if one of you sleeps through the salah or they forget it, then whenever they should remember it, they should pray it, right? Now, the question is, when we say that this tarqib, this order is necessary, it's a fars between the salawat. Uh, there are three conditions or three scenarios in which this order uh, is dropped. And that is, for example, number one, if the time is very short like if you're praying maghrib at the very end that if you involve yourself into praying the asr making the qada of the asr you're going to miss today's maghrib and then in this case this order is exempted meaning that you first pray maghrib and then you pray the asr the second scenario in which the order is exempted is forgetting so if you forget that you ever had to make the qadr of the asr until you pray maghrib and maghrib ends and isha comes along and you realize that well you hadn't prayed asr yet well in that case you don't need to repeat the maghrib the order from you had already been dropped and the third scenario is that if the qaza salawat double in numbers. Uh, what it means, in other words, is if they are in excess. And excess has been noted by the ulama to have reached six salawat. Like if someone, for example, misses fajr, right? And they don't have any other qaza salawat that they have to perform. This is the first time they're missing the salah. In order to perform Zohar, they'd have to first make Fajr. So let's say they don't pray Fajr. They pray Zohar. So that Zohar remains Mu'allaq or remains in suspension. It's not valid at the moment because, like we mentioned, that the order is a necessary condition. So the order is not being met for that person is not praying, has not yet prayed the Fajr Salah. So the Zohar, its validity is in suspension. The same goes for Asr. If he does not pray Fajr and Zohar and then goes on to Asr, that Asr will be suspended, its validity. Maghrib, similarly. Isha, also similarly. Then the next Fajr, if all five Salawat, right, he doesn't pray them in order and he reaches six, all of them will become valid. So this is a very strange scenario in which 
Kathratul Qadha actually rectifies Allah Salaf. I mean, when the number of Qadha Salawat increases, it actually solves a problem. Up till the sixth Salah, every Salah was becoming suspended. Its validity uh, was being suspended. But after your Qadha Salawat turned into six, right, all previous Salah which you pray, except for that Fajr, will become valid. And as for that Fajr, you're still going to have to make Qaza for that. Right? So this is the basic thing that you need to remember uh, in this chapter. Waman fadatu salatun. Whoever misses a prayer, qawaha ida dhakaraha. Then he's going to discharge it whenever he remembers it. <clears throat> and this will be performed before the prayer of that particular time. In our given example, Maghrib is the time and Asr is being prayed before that. Except if for the sharp time is so short that a person fears that they're going to miss the prayer of that particular time. Then in this case he's going to advance the particular salah over the missed salah and then they're going to discharge that qadah salah this is one scenario and i mentioned two others that is forgetting it and also uh, if a person has too many missed salah. وَمَنْ فَاتَتْهُ صَلَوَاتُ رَتَّبَهَا فِي الْقَضَى كَمَا وَجَبَتْ فِي الْأَصْرِ Whoever has missed more than one prayer, a few prayers, he's going to discharge them in the sequence in which they originally became obligatory. إِلَّا أَن تَزِيدَ الْفَوَائِتْ عَلَى خَمْسِ صَلَوَاتِ Except for the case in which missed prayers exceed more than five, in which case the sequence is waived. You don't have to pray in the same sequence. Question is, what if someone, he makes qaza now, the qaza salawat are less than five. Will they again need to be made in order? And the answer is no. Once the order is lost, until you can clean your slate back to zero, uh, the tartib component, the sequence is no longer necessary. Babul Aukat Allati Tukrahu Fihisala. The disapproved times for prayer. Uh, the chapter of when a person can pray the salawat and what is the optimal time for praying them. Uh, that's already passed. We've discussed that. Now we going to talk about those times in which prayer is disapproved. And in this chapter, you can divide these times in two groups. In one group, no sort of prayer is allowed. Neither nafil, nor qaza, no sirtatullawa, nor funeral prayer, nothing. And in group two, nafil prayers are not allowed. Other prayers are acceptable. So you can make qaza in those times, you can do sajdatu talawa, you can pray the funeral prayer in those times. Uh, that is not an issue. So what are those two groups? He's going to talk about the first group. لا تجوز الصلاة عند تلوع الشمس ولا عند غروبها ولا عند قيامها في الظهيرة Prayer is not permitted. Uh, neither qaza uh, nor nafil. Number one, during sunrise. Number two, during sunset. And number three, during midday, when the shadow stops decreasing in size. Right? There's one exception, though. In the sunset case, uh, that day's asr is acceptable. What that means is if you started asr salah late, and while praying, the sun starts to set, uh, you can finish that Asr prayer. But only for that day. You cannot make any other Qaza Salah at that moment. 
And in these times, these three times, one will not pray at a funeral. Nor will one perform a sajdatu tilawa. That was the first group in which every sort of action uh, is to be avoided. Right? And so in a hadith of Uqba ibn Amir radiallahu anhu, he says, Thalathatu awqatin nahana Rasulullah alayhi salam an nusalliya fiha wa an naqbura fihi mawtana. Three times in which the Prophet Islam forbade us from praying and from burying our deceased in the tulu'i shams hatta tatafiq, when sun rises until it completely risen, wa inda zawaliha hatta tazul, and at the time of zawal, until it ends, وَحِينَ تُزِيفَ لِلْغُرُوبِ حَتَّى تَغْرُوبِ And when the sun starts to set, until it has completely set down. So these three times, no sort of action should be done. وَيُقْرَهُ أَنْ يَتَنَفَّلَ بَعْدَ صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسِ The second group, in which nafil is not allowed, but qaza, janaza, and sajdat al-talawah can be done. So it's disapproved to perform any nafil prayer after the fajr prayer. So once the sun, uh, once fajr starts, you can only pray the two units of sunnah of fajr and two faras of fajr. From the time fajr starts to the time the sun has completely risen up, no nafil prayer is allowed. وَبَعْدَ صَلَاةِ الْعَصَرِ حَتَّى تَغْرُبَ الشَّمْسِ The second time is after Asr prayer. Once you've prayed the Fawz, any other Nafil prayer after that is not allowed until the sun completely sets. Before you pray the Fawz, you can pray as many Nafil as you want. But once you're done with the Fawz of Asr, after that you cannot pray any Nafil prayer. Right? In these two times, I, after Fajr starts or after you've prayed the Asr Fawz, it's not a problem if someone makes the Qaza prayer or if they perform the prostration of Tilawa or if they perform the funeral prayer during these times. Two times. These things are allowed. But one must not perform the two units after tawaf. So you know whenever you perform tawaf, you're supposed to uh, pray two units of prayer. In these two times, after Fajr starts and after Asar Fars, even if you make tawaf, you will not pray those two units. You will have to wait until the sun has completely risen or completely set. It is disapproved to perform any nafil prayer after the fajr starts, except for the two sunnah. And one should not perform nafil prayers before the faras of Maghrib. But this is where people don't have a habit. For example, if you go to the Haramay, in which after the Maghrib Allah, before the first prayer, a lot of people, you know, they pray two units of Salatul, uh, naf, uh, salatul Masjid and Salatul Muzul. If you're in such an area, then it's okay if you do pray. Two units of Nafil prayer before the Farz of Maghrib. But if you're in an area where this is not a norm, then you're not allowed to pray them. Babu Nawafil, the super gateway prayers, the voluntary prayers. Although the chapter is Babu Nawafil, it also talks about the Sunnah prayer as well. And so he starts off actually with the Sunnah prayers within a day. And he mentions a Sunnah for Salah. The Sunnah in Salah, an yusalliya raka'atayn ba'da tulu al-fajr, awwa arba'an qabla al-dhuhar wa raka'atayn ba'daha, 
واربعا قبل العصر وانشاء ركعتين وركعتين بعد المغرب واربعا قبل العشاء واربعا بعدها وانشاء ركعتين The sunnah is to pray two units of before Fajr Farz, four units before Zohar Farz, and two units after. So that's a total of ten. Sorry, a total of eight up to now. Then four before Asr. And if one wishes, a, they don't find enough time or don't have happy energy, then only two units before Asr. Uh, two units after Maghrib, four units before Isha first, and two units after. Now, in this, he's actually merged both Sunnah Mu'akkada and Sunnah Ghair Mu'akkada. So there are 12 Sunnah Mu'akkada prayers throughout the day, which are two units before Fajr, six in Zohar, a four before and two afterwards. Then there's two units after Maghrib Farz and two units after the Shafars. This makes a total of 12. As far as the Sunnah prayer concerned, before Asr and before Isha, uh, there's Sunnah Ghair Muqtada. Right? So that's the difference between the two types of Sunnah prayers, but he's merged all of them together. Sunnah Muqqada, one should not have a habit of leaving them out. If it happens sometimes, it's okay. Sunnah Muqqada, Aghair Muqqada is just like nothing prayer. Now we, and then you have nothing prayer, which you can pray as many as you want, whenever you want, except for those times, which we just mentioned. Now, how must a person go on when they want to perform the nafil prayer? Are the prayer of nafil in the day and in the night, their method the same? Uh, does it differ? So that's what he's going to talk about now. And says, When you're praying the nafil prayers during the day, you have two options. Option number one is that you pray in two units and then say the salam. Uh, sorry, or you can pray four units and then say the salam. So two options, either in form of two units or in the form of four units. Right? But you cannot pray one nafil prayer more than four units at a time. So after four units, you have to say the taslim, make the salutations. And then if you wish, then restart a new naf uh, then start a new nafil prayer. But the maximum number of units you can put in are four. And this is during the daytime. As far as the night nafil prayers are concerned, فَقَالَ أَبُوْ حَنِيفَ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى إِنْ صَلَّى ثَمَانِيَ رَقَعَاتِ بِتَسْلِيمَ وَاحِدَ جَازَ If one wishes to join eight units in one salutation, then this is also permitted. Two units make the shahud, two units make the shahud. So after every two units, you make the shahud. And after the end of the eighth unit, you say the salam. So in one salam, you're actually praying eight units. At night, this is acceptable according to Imam Abu Hanifa. More than eight is disapproved. As far as the Sahibain are concerned, they say, لا يزيد بالليل على ركعتين بتسليمة واحدة One should not exceed two units with one salutation. أي your night nawafil should be in the two unit sizes. Because this is how the Prophet Islam used to pray his tahajjud uh, in two units. After each two unit, he would make the taslim. And on this, the fatwa is given. This is the better way to perform 
your night nafils, but if you choose to do it Imam Muhanifa style, uh, that is also valid. Now to talk about uh, the qira'a during nafil prayers, you know in first prayers you recite in the first two units and in the last units, the third or the fourth, uh, recitation is not a false. Well, the same hukum does not apply to nafil prayers. Wal qira'a wajibatun fi raka'atayn al ulayayn wa hu makhayyanun fi al-ukhrayayn. Recitation in obligatory prayers in the first two units is necessary. In the last two units, one has a choice. Insha'a qara al fatiha. If one wishes, they may recite the fatiha alone. Wa insha'a sakata. Option two is that they can choose to remain silent. Wa insha'a sabbaha. And option three is that they can just say the tasbih. Just say Subhana Rabbi al Adim or Subhana Rabbi al three times. That is also sufficient. وَالْقِرَاءَ وَاجِبَةٌ فِي جَمِيعِ رَقَعَةِ النَّفْلِ وَجَمِيعِ رَقَعَةِ الْوِتُرِ But recitation is incumbent, necessary in all units of nafil prayers and also in all units of witr prayer. So you have to recite the Fatiha and in other surah with it. You don't have the option of just reciting the Fatiha or keeping silent or just saying the speech. Now he's going to talk about the qaza of nafil prayer. Remember, starting voluntary prayers is voluntary. It's an option. But once you begin, finishing them becomes wajib. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, لَا تُبْتِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ Do not invalidate or do not destroy your ibadah. So the option is in the commencement of the ibadah, not in the completion of the ibadah. That's what he's discussing now. وَمَنْ دَخَلَ فِي صَلَاةِ النَّفْلِ Whoever enters into a nafil prayer, and the same goes for a nafil fast. ثُمَّ أَفْصَدَهَا Then they invalidate it. قَضَاهَا They'll have to make the qaza of it. Presenting a case, فَإِنْ صَلَّ أَرْبَعَ رَقَعَاتِ Someone starts with four unit intention of nafil prayer. وَقَعَدَ فِي الْأُولَيَيْنِ They make the tashahud after the first two units. ثُمَّ أَفْسَدُ الْأُخْرَيَيْنِ But they actually invalidate the last two units. قَضَى رَقَعَتَيْنِ They only make the qaza of two units. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ يُوسُفُ رَحْمَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ But Imam Muhani, Yusuf has a different opinion. And he says, يَقْزِ أَرْبَان He will make the qaza of all four units. Imam Abu Yusuf's uh, reasoning is straightforward. He intended to pray all four units together. And if he invalidates it in between, is it as he invalidated the entire thing? And so we will make the qada of the entire thing. The reasoning for the other opinion is that although you can join or you can pray nafil in increments of four and in night up to eight, you can join them together in one taslima, but each two units is, sep uh, is considered separately. It is treated as a separate salah. That is why it is necessary that you make the shahud after every two units. We're talking about nothing. Because if you miss a tashahud after two units, right? That is as if you have not prayed those two units at all. So it's necessary to make the shahud after every two units. So each two unit are considered a separate salah. So in this case that he's presenting, if they made the tashahud after the first two units, it's as if they completed that part of the salah. So since they're invalidating the last two units, they'll only make qaza of the last two because the first two have already been completed.
And so whenever nafil becomes invalidated, it must be performed again. I mean, qaza has to be made, whatever the reason. Uh, whether the reason involves you purposely breaking it because you were called by someone or you remembered something or for something out of your control, for example, your wuzu breaking, right? Whatever the reason is, once it's commenced, if it is invalidated in the between, the qaza for it must be made. Now we talk about uh, some components of the salah which are not farz in nafil uh, but are necessary in the farz and wajib salawat. A person can perform nafil prayers while sitting down even though they have the ability to stand. In first prayer, if you can stand, you cannot pray while sitting down. That in Nafil prayer, you have the option of not standing up at all. If someone begins the Nafil prayer while standing, but in the middle they choose, whether or not there is an excuse, they choose to just sit down. According to Mabu Hanifa, that salah is still valid. And this is the Muftabihi opinion on which fatwa is given. Why? Because in Nafil prayer, standing was never a farz. So it doesn't matter whether you started off standing or chose not to stand in the middle. It's all equal. But according to the Sahibain, if you have a legitimate excuse, then obviously you can continue your prayer while sitting down. But if you commenced your nafil prayer while standing, then it becomes necessary that you complete it while you are standing. Yes, you have the option of starting the prayer by not standing at all. That is acceptable. But if you start the prayer while standing, then you have to complete the prayer while you are standing. I mean, in Qiyam, obviously. Unless... There's an excuse. That's an other reason altogether. Now again, like I mentioned, the fatwa is an Imam Abu Hanifa's opinion. You can choose to sit down. But if you have the qudra, the ability, you should choose to stand. Because in a hadith, it's mentioned that a person who recites the Quran while standing gets twice the ajr of a person who recites the Quran in prayer while they're sitting down. So why would someone, why should someone intentionally choose to reduce their ajar in half by choosing to sit down? So as long as you have the ability, uh, you should pray uh, while standing. You should recite the Quran in prayer while you are standing. So that's one difference between farz and nafil prayer. Or not one, another difference between farz and nafil prayer, which is that in nafil prayer, even though you have the ability to stand, you can choose not to. Another difference. Woman can a kharij al misr, yet a nafil wala da batihi ila ayi jihbin tawa jat yu mi iman. If someone is traveling outside the city, they can perform their Nafil prayer while they're on the vehicle. So if you're traveling by train, by bus, or even by plane, right? You're sitting on your seat, you choose to pray Nafil prayer, right? You can just pray while sitting down and making gestures. Uh, face whatever direction is easy for you. You don't have to face the Qibla. You don't have to stand up, make Ruku and Sujood properly. For Nafil prayer, and remember, the sunnah have the same ahkam as the nafil. Right? You can pray the sunnah prayer or the nafil prayer. If you are traveling, uh, seated with the gestures, face any direction which is easy for you. 
But as far as faraz and wajib prayers are concerned, and with them, one exception to the nafil, uh, sunnah prayer is the sunnah of fajr. Because the sunnah of fajr have the similar ahkam to that of faraz ahkam. So for faraz, wajib, and the sunnah of fajr, one must pray properly. I mean, if you're healthy, then you have to make a proper ruku and sujood. You have to make the qiyam. You have to face the qibla. All of these things must be done in the farz. But as far as the nafil sunnah are concerned, you have a lot of leg room there. You can pray while mounted. You can pray with gestures. You can pray not facing the qibla. That's uh, allowed in sharia. Uh, 